Hello everyone! So I have a fun day planned, or at least I think it's going to be fun. It is currently about 10 o'clock and this morning I just got some sketches done for Patreon and then my mom and I walked to Project Runway. And now I'm heading off to the train station because I'm going to a vintage clothing expo in New York City today. So I thought I would show you my outfit and try and take you along with me. I don't know if it's going to be very good, I don't know how much is going to be there, I don't know how much I'm going to get, uh, but I thought it sounded good enough that I was willing to take the four hours of public transport and pay the 40 bucks to see what it's like. This is my outfit today. <laughs> my nails were wet last night so I couldn't curl my hair. So I just used a curling iron to give it some vuv. And then I'm wearing a 1950s sweater. I've got my animal belt. Animals are upside down. I should fix that. <laughs> and then I've got the pants from Collective and my Ruth shoes from Royal Vintage, which are the most comfortable shoes I own. I love them. So that is what it is looking like and I'm off. All right, so it is much later in the day. I think when I first talked to you, it was 10.30, and it is now 8.30 at night. But I've been to Manhattan Vintage, and I've been back for a little while, and I just came upstairs to do a little bit more work for Patreon. I got all of these sketches outlined this morning, so now I wanna get those all colored in, and I'm gonna be filming that for Patreon. So if you're interested, that'll be available for the $6 and up tiers. But first, I just wanted to give you a little recap of the Vintage Expo. It was really, really good. Admission was $15 and when I got there there were probably 75 people lined up. The line was going outside of the building but it opened on time and once it opened the line moved really really quickly. They let everyone in. It was just a matter of letting people in kind of slowly so everyone could claim their tickets and purchase tickets if they needed to. There were about 70 booths if I recall correctly and each booth was basically the best vintage clothing booth I'd ever seen in the antique store times three in terms of scale. At least most of them were. There were definitely some booths that focused more on luxury items or seemed sparse or seemed more focused on 80s fashion, but there was a huge assortment of garments from 1900 and 1910 all the way to the 1980s. Uh, and there were a lot of garments in my particular favorite eras, which would be the 40s and 50s. So it was a lot of fun looking through everything. The only thing I'd say is that prices tended to be very, very expensive, especially accessories. A lot of the dresses seem to be relatively reasonably priced. Um, I came across a lot that were in the $50 to $150 range, which is pretty normal for vintage garments, but purses and belts and hats all seem to be very, very expensive based off of what I've seen online as well as in antique stores. And the clothing in general was kind of pricey. Uh, I'd be browsing through a rack and come across something cute, and then it would end up being $300, and it was just really, really shocking. And I had that happen within a booth. So some things would be reasonably priced, others would be really expensive. But I went in with no expectations and no idea what it would be like, and I was really, really pleased. And I think even if I'd had higher expectations, I still would have been impressed by it, both by the scale and the quality of the garments that were there. The only downside I can say is just shopping this type of atmosphere in general. It was kind of crowded, so it was difficult going through some of the racks. And it was also crowded to a degree where I felt pressure to make decisions. So if I picked up a garment, I really liked it. I didn't feel like I could leave it behind and come back to it at the end of the day, or in an hour even, which I've become quite used to in terms of shopping at antique stores where they will hold items for you until you're done shopping and looking through everything. But it was still really, really cool. And I think they are hosting another one in October, and I definitely go back. Uh, and now I'm going to show you what you're sitting on, which is a giant box of fabric. Right on top here, we have a lovely kind of thickish chambray. And I was attracted to this because the only chambray they had that didn't look wrinkled in the pictures, which I thought boded well for not wrinkling when I actually used it. And then this is a rayon cotton blend that I purchased several other variations of. So I purchased this fabric in a light blue Hawaiian print with little surfers on it. And then I had that same fabric in a big beige slash brown tone, which I used for a Patreon exclusive 1940s romper. They had this tagged as wandering banana fabric or traveling bananas. That was it. And I just had to buy something that was described that way. It's just a very light but quite stiff fabric and since it's got the rayon in there it doesn't wrinkle as much as linen but has the workability and the weight of linen which I really really enjoy. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Next up is this fabric. Oh that's so fun! So I ordered six yards of this but I think it's actually eight yards because it says that lucky me this piece was the end of the bolt so I got more than I ordered. Now this was a fabric I saw on their website in March but it, I was on my no buy so I didn't buy any of it and then it went out of stock and I was very sad. 
So this is a lightweight linen, but it's a glazed linen. So it's got a black base, but as you can see, it has this red shift to it. It reminds me of the fabrics they would use in Game of Thrones or the Borgias or really any period or fantasy show where it's a historical textile in the way that it's linen, but it's got a twist to it that makes it really, really interesting. Next up is a cotton shirting, which feels amazing. This is really lightweight, which is exactly what I had hoped for. And I got two and a half yards of this, and this is to go with this fabric, this fabric, and some mink pelts that I purchased in an antique store. So these are going to be the collar for a jacket made out of a camel colored suiting. Then this is going to be vest, this is going to be the skirt, and then this is going to be the blouse that goes underneath it. And I realized I didn't have anything in my stash that I liked, uh, so I decided to order this when I decided to order everything else. And then this is what really motivated me to make this order. It is a Scottish imported coat weight wool suiting. So again, this was something that I saw in March. It was very, very sad to see in March because I knew I couldn't buy it. And in March, I was also watching Poldark, which has all of these amazing 18th century pieces in it that have such a rich texture to them. And I just could not stop thinking about turning this fabric into a riding habit. Uh, I don't know whether it'd be an 18th century riding habit or a kind of early Regency riding habit or something in between, like 1790s, which just so happens to be when Poldark takes place. But I thought this would be perfect for it. I love this color so much. And also in March, I was doing a whole bunch of tailoring projects and playing around with pad stitching, which works so well with these uh, kind of thicker textured wools. So I really wanted this one, but it was expensive and I was trying not to buy anything. So I didn't get it, but then they still had it left in April when I was ordering other things. So I decided to get it and I got seven yards of it, I think, which should be enough for any era of my choosing. That is what I purchased and now I need to get to work on these sketches. As I said, if you wanna see how they turn out, then you need to be following me over on Patreon. Down here, I have everything for my 1980s project. I'd hope to finish the mock-up vlog for this today, but I just have not been in a chatty mood at all. I've been really tired. I also want to get started on Easter project, uh, which is on the 21st, so I have two weeks to get that done. But I'm gonna be going away and I have some sponsored commitments uh, in the latter half of this month. So I really want to get it done soon. I've got this delightful white embroidered bunny chiffon, which I purchased for like $3 a yard at Joann's. And then I have some matching or contrasting, depending on how you look at it, uh, quilting cotton. For that is over here. And I imagine if this goes well, you will have already seen this video by this point. So that's something I can work on tomorrow too. I also have a video for Patreon to film about making that project that I just haven't been in the mood to do since it's once again a chatty project. So instead I've been focusing on this ensemble which is kind of a late 1880s or late 1890s project. I haven't quite decided which. This project is going to consist of a jacket, a skirt, a blouse, a vest, and a hat, I imagine. Uh, and I'm doing a really elaborate fur collar on this made out of full minks. Uh, and the minks were all purchased as part of stoles, so they are vintage mink. No animals were harmed by me purchasing them. Uh, they were over 50 years old, I would say, and from an antique store. I don't support the modern fur industry, but I do like using vintage pieces of fur when I can. You can actually see my very first sketch of it. So these would be all the minks, and then this is the overall jacket. It's kind of like a jacket that Edith wears in Crimson Peak, but I'm following the lines of an 1880s jacket uh, when it comes to piecing the back. So it's all going to be pieced as one, almost like a robe a la Francaise. And I got the blouse drafted yesterday, so it's pretty heavily pleated, but none of the pleats are tacked down. So so it has a lot of volume to it, which seems in line with the blouses I've seen from this period. So it's a really difficult period to research for blouses because at this point shirtwaists weren't super popular and instead you would wear two-piece ensembles that were heavily boned. So seeing what a simple shirt looks like is really tricky and I wanted it to be a simple shirt because it's going to be worn underneath so many layers. So this is the skirt in progress. Uh, I added tapes to the back which controlled the placement of the volume in the skirt. Then I also had closure. So I'll show you that on my dress form at some point, probably when I have to hem it, which will be soon. And then I went ahead and drafted the vest. And I've done rounded points, which kind of mimic the rounded edge of the collar. And I've tried to incorporate the collar into the front piece and into the back piece without having additional piecing. So I don't know how well this works, but I'm excited to give it a try. And that's what the back looks like. So it just dips down. But I'm not doing any of the elaborate pleating, which seemed to be common during this period, because I don't want there to be a lot of bulk underneath the jacket. And this has served as a really great reference for the blouse itself, though I'm doing a different style of collar. And I might end up making this little waist 
center that they have on it. Uh, I'm forgetting what they're called, but they were worn in the 1860s too. And I think that they're a neat little detail and I could do some decorative button work down the front and just have some fun with that. So right now I think I'm going to transfer this onto paper and hopefully get a mock-up done. I also really want to get a mock-up made and the pattern finalized for my medieval project, which I know I mentioned in my February vlog because that is how long I've had that project planned for. Also have to finish up all of my higher tier Patreon rewards tonight. So sorry for that massive ramble, but now you're all caught up. Let's move I'm on. for New Hampshire tomorrow, and I've basically been spending today just trying to get little things done so when I come back, everything is in a good place. So I've also been working on a few other videos, like my 1980s mock-up vlog, which I filmed last night, and a video all about making this bunny dress, which will go up on April 21st, so you'll have seen it by now. I think this dress turned out really, really cute. I have to add a buckle to the belt, but other than that, it's completely finished, and it fits, and it's adorable. I've also been working on the late 1880s project, so this is the bus for that. I got the collar sewn on last night, so now it just needs closures and sleeves. I also did a fitting with this this morning, so I know where the uh, closure placement on the collar is. Then over here in the blaring sunlight, I have the vest pattern for that project, which I got drafted a couple days ago, but I finally got around to making mock-up of and fitting the mock-up, so now that's ready to be worked on. I also actually cut out the 1980s project, though I won't have a chance to work on that until after I get back. I had barely enough fabric to cut out the jacket, and I'm going to have to piece the sleeves, which isn't ideal, but it is what it is. However, my biggest accomplishment by far for me personally is finally finishing the pattern for the medieval kirtle that I've been talking about for so long. I really wanted to make this pattern quite simple, but I wanted it also to be quite fitted and it's been kind of a battle between those two ideals but I think I finally found something that I'm happy with and I got it transferred to paper and all full length so now I think I'm gonna try and get that cut out really quickly uh, and then I don't know what's next but I will find something to work on until the day is done hello everyone so it has been ages since I filmed for this video by ages I mean over a week or probably a week. I think I filmed on the 10th of April and that's currently the 16th of April. I was really productive on the 10th, so productive that I probably forgot to film most of it, but I got a whole bunch of filming done for other videos and work on other projects accomplished. And then on the 11th, my mom and I went on a trip up to New Hampshire, and that trip is going to be featured in a separate vlog and probably a separate haul video too. I got back on the 14th, and I have a sponsored video due on the 18th. I have to have it done by, and I had a doctor's appointment on the 15th, and I am spending all of the 17th in New York City with my dad because we're going fabric shopping before my birthday, which is on the 25th. First. And we couldn't go later because of Easter and Good Friday, and also the fact that on Thursday I'm getting an injection, I'm getting up to date on my vaccinations, and then I have some work from a calls to do. So it has been an incredibly busy, stressful week. It's been a lot of fun going away with my mom, but I just have not even wanted to pick up the camera. But luckily I managed to finish my project for the sponsored video, so now all of the footage for that is filmed. I just have to edit it and do the voiceover. I'm feeling really relieved about that, so I'm focusing a little bit on what I'm going to get fabric for in New York City. I currently have a pretty long list that involves some Patreon projects, involves some personal projects, and plenty of historical projects. And I'm not going to design too much before the end, except for an 1860s project. So I'm going to be making an elliptical hoop skirt later in the month. And I was recently gifted a whole bunch of these ladies' magazines from the 1860s. So I think I'm going to go through these and try and find a few pieces that really inspire me and either try and pick up fabric to recreate those or combine some designs uh, into something original that I want to purchase fabric for. And then I'm going to make a list of fabric that I need to buy. Sorry, the day we got back, there was a huge storm and my dog kept me up from 4 a.m. until 6.30 a.m. And today we all got up at 7 and then last night I was up really late working on the sponsored project and my mom's dog got us all up at 7 o'clock so I'm tired but I'm excited to get this done and then I'm excited to clean up my sewing room because uh, I've got lots that I can put away. So I didn't film anything while I was in New York City, but it was a pretty successful trip. I ended up getting everything on my list, I think, though it was kind of a struggle to get there. So over here we have everything for an 1680s project. So there's four yards of this mushroomy brown colored silk velvet. There's this really cool polyester fabric, which has a brown base, but all of the silver on it. And then a black and silver brocade for the outer dress. And then I got some of these montes for it. I got some black trim, I got some brown trim, and I got a brown feather for the hat. And then we have these two projects which share some materials. So this is going to be another, actually this is going to be a 1740s 
costume. So this is going to be the dress. This is going to be the chemise. It's a silk organza with a really cool print to it. This is going to be the trim. That's going to be a necklace. And that is going to be a riding habit style jacket. And it is a silk satin. And then this fabric, I'm going to order more of it because it's from Joann's. It's going to be paired with this. Uh, I'm going to use it for Renaissance style dress. Then that's going to be a robe over top of it. This is going to be the chemise. These are some really cool beads I'd like to use on it. And then these are what inspired this project, which are some carved skulls. They're not real skulls, they're like carved from wax or something. And then over here we have everything for Historically Accurate Anastasia, which was a Patreon voted project. Over here we have something based off of a painting of a bustle dress that I just fell in love with. So I ended up having to get polyester satin for the base of it, but I got this really gorgeous trim for it. I got a feather that matches really nicely, and I got a bunch of beads that I'm going to use to deck out and also thin out the trim. I think I'm going to cut it into little appliques, then use this to weave it together so it isn't so blocky. I'm going to use this satin face chiffon. It is a silk for trim as well as this mesh. Um, then over here, this project wasn't on my list, but I just found things that I really liked for it. So I think this is going to be an 1850s wedding dress and I'm going to make it uh, to fit over top of the hoop skirt that I just finished. In your time, I probably made that hoop skirt like two months ago, but I haven't posted or finished editing the video about it just yet in my time. So there's 11 yards of this beautiful polyester satin, but it has this fine pattern on it. And the sheen of it's really nice. It reminds me a lot of silk charmeuse. And then I got some actual silk satin, and this was from Hamas Fabrics, or Hamas Fabrics. So it was a lot cheaper than the green satin you see over there, but they had a really poor color selection. However, they did have ivory. So I got six yards of that, and then he accidentally tore it, so I got an extra yard, and I think that's gonna be the overdress, and this is gonna be a petticoat. And I just got some really lovely trims that complement it well as well. I wanted to get a full bolt of this, but they didn't have it in stock. So I think I have six yards of that and then 10 yards of that one. I also bought an ostrich feather for my arsenic green sporting costume, which I have all the other materials I need for. And then I got these really cool resin gems that I think look like dragon eyes. I think they're so cool. And I've purchased quite a few of them over the years, but I've never seen them in these big packages before. So I totally cracked and I got some in blue and then I got some in red. This is mesh and silk charmeuse for a potential Anastasia bonus project, but I think I bought the wrong color, so I don't know if that's going to end up happening. And then these two green fabrics were from a store that was closing. This is just a lightweight cotton that I really like the weight of. I thought that would be good for a chemise of sorts or a shirt to go with a skirt. And I thought this would be fantastic for an 1890s skirt. I don't know what type of fabric it is. They said it was about 6% silk and then the rest is polyester. And it's very stiff. So it looks almost like a twill but has the shine of a satin and it feels like horsehair. It's insane how stiff it is. So it's a really interesting fabric and I'm kind of curious and tentatively excited to work with that. So now I have to finish writing a voiceover for a video that is due tomorrow. So that'll be a fun way to spend the rest of my evening. And I say evening, but it's currently 11.30. <laughs> so I also have to get this put away because I don't think my mom would be thrilled about it being all over the floor. And I'm not thrilled at the potential for dogs peeing on it if I leave it this way. everyone. So this is going to be a bit of a deja vu sort of clip because I'm pretty sure the last clip I filmed was me apologizing for not filming and talking about how busy and hectic the past two weeks had been. I went away with my mom and then I had a sponsored video and then I had three appointments and then I had a job and then I was going to New York City and then it was my birthday and blah 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 blah. And then my mom and I decided we were going away again just for a couple days in Pennsylvania but that trip wiped me out. I was exhausted the two days after we got back and I ended up losing almost a 
two week of productivity just because I was so, so tired. And then I realized I had a work deadline that I wrote down correctly. So I had to panic and work really, really quickly and really hard to complete a hoop skirt on time for another sponsored video. So in between the last two weeks, I think I filmed maybe three clips for this video. One of those clips is about 40 minutes of footage focusing on making two crowns. And the first is this gold crown, which I'm going to pair with a medieval costume. And the second is this skull encrusted silver crown, which I'm going to pair with a renaissance costume, which is actually the personal project that I worked a lot on right after my birthday. And this has stuff falling off of it, which is always a good sign. <laughs> So I will try and include some of the footage of me constructing these, just because I don't really have another video to put it in, and I went to all the effort to film it, so I might as well share it somewhere. And then of course I also filmed almost 12 hours of footage of making a hoop skirt, but that's going to have its own devoted video. And now it is currently May 3rd, and I'm going to continue on this vlog probably for another week or so and try and round it out with some more footage and some more costume-focused stuff, because that has been very lacking in this video so far. So first I'm going to write a to-do list for today and then we are just going to get as much work done as we possibly can. I would like, so my current projects consist of the renaissance piece that goes with this crown as well as an 1880s slash 90s project that I need to draft a jacket for and I'm kind of in the draping mood so I think I'm going to put drape jacket on my list and I'm also going to put drape 1950s because I have a few 1950s dress ideas that I want to get going on and I'd also like to drape a blouse made out of this fabric and then I also want to finish 1980s. I think that's it for my list today. I'm going to put this on my mirror so I can see it and be reminded of it as I work through everything. We'll see how the day goes. I just spent 20 minutes struggling to get this on my desk form so I could take an Instagram photo. The photo is done, so now I could just spend another 20 minutes trying to take it off my dress form. But this is the blouse and the vest for the 1880s project, and I think it turned out beautifully. I'm really, really happy with it. The only two things I have left to do is sewing on this button. Uh, I did have the button sewn on originally, but I sewed on one of the smaller buttons, and I only had four of those buttons, and they need to go down the front of the vest. So I had to take it off and then just replace it. And then I'm also going to add tacking stitches to the tail of the coat so it won't floof out. So I pinned that and once I take it off the dress form I can do that really easily. But the so I did quite a bit of drafting uh, but this is the most elaborate thing that I drafted or draped rather and this is the 1880s slash 90s coat. It's definitely more of an 1890s shape since it doesn't have the bum pad but it was seamed based off of examples from the 1880s. So it's got the 1880s style back and this is going to be trimmed with minks around the neckline and is going to be full length. I just didn't have wide enough fabric to make it full length so I'm going to be adding 20 inches to the hem when I transfer this over to paper which is what I'm going to do right now. So I have to get this table surface cleaned off first because it's going to take up the entire table. And these are the two dresses I kind of want to get cut. I have made them both before but I really liked the pattern so I want to revisit them. So I want to make this dress out of this tulip pink print and then I want to follow the 1970s sewing through decades pattern out of that print which is also by tulip pink. Then later tonight I really need to work on the skirt size commissioned. This one's almost done. I ended up getting the yoke drafted today and sewn in. So now it just needs a good iron and it needs to be hemmed. Then I got this one cut out. It's cut out of this purple Platitudes collection fabric. So hopefully I can get the third one cut out today as well and get the pleats sewn and then I can start on drafting the yokes for them tomorrow. So that's where that currently is. I went to Joann's. So I got a little bit of fabric and then a whole bunch of binding and tons and tons of buttons. I had quite a few projects I needed buttons for, including the commissioned skirts and the commissioned blouses. So I got bias binding and buttons that will hopefully match all of those projects. Then I also got buttons for a dress I'm going to make out of this fabric. I was looking into getting buttons for this project, but I actually had some in my stash. And the same can be said for this project. I had some buttons that matched already. And then I got a zipper for this dress, which I mentioned yesterday. And and also the Chili Pink Unicorn dress I got buttons for. So I'm going to go through and put these into bags so they're all sectioned out and I know which project they're associated with. And then I will put the receipts in with all of my receipts because I save them for business purposes. And then I wait until the middle of April the following year to enter them all, which takes me like a solid week. But I procrastinate, so ideal. Let me give you a tour of my Patreon box. I have things for $36 patrons. I have like $400 worth of stamps. Please don't rob me. I have thank you stickers and dinosaur stickers, which I think are what I'm going to be using today. Gold star stickers. 
stickers with my face on them. I have my address stamp wrapped in old stamp packaging and extra tape. And then I have Sharpies to draw in the envelopes or to sign prints with. Wasn't that fun? That is my P.O. Box address, by the way, and my delightful address stamp. I will link it in the description box down below. I don't usually advertise my P.O. Box just because I've got a lot of stuff and I don't really need new stuff and I don't want people to feel pressured to send me stuff. But if you're interested, that is what it is. Now I have to stamp all of those. Do you see the pile? Let's see if I run out of dinosaur stamps before I'm done. All of my rewards are done and ready to be sent out. I'm just gonna give them a look over first to make sure that they all have stamps and everything. I've decided that I would like to make an 18th century pirate costume today, so that's what I'm going to do. But first, I need to do the tidying. I need this dress form to drape this pirate project, which means I have to get this off the dress form. So I have to finish draping this first and then I will be back and can actually start on the pirate project. So I got what was originally on the dress form off the dress form and onto paper so I can work on making a mock-up for that later. And then I used my newly emptied dress forms to drape two garments. So this one is for the pirate project that I was just talking about. There won't be a seam here, I just had to dart it to get to fit over the dress form. This has a very low scoop neck, very uh, thin straps and kind of that unique 18th century arm tie. And then it is a sack back dress, so I draped that as well. And this goes over top of a pieced back that fits close to the body. I will be transferring this to paper and making a mock-up of it today and I will try and feature that in this video. But I think it's going to get in its own video and I'm going to focus more on making a simple little Regency dress today. Day. So this has a gathered bodice and a very uniquely shaped arm thigh, which was typical for the Regency period. It also has what was sometimes called a star back, which is just the way of piecing the back, so it's very, very narrow. So I think I'm going to make a mock-up for definitely this one, and I'll see how that fits, and then I can potentially get started on that today. These are all the fabrics for the Pirate Project, and this is the project for the Regency dress that I just showed you. It's a seaweed print, historical reproduction print that I picked up at Keepsake Quilting. So I'm leaning towards Towards working on this dress today just because I think it'll be quicker to get together and also because as I said I'd kind of like to make a video exclusively about this project since I'm quite excited about it and since there's quite a lot to it. So this is the mock-up for the pirate bodice and I'm super happy with it. My stays aren't laced properly so ignore that uh, and I have to take this in by about a half inch here and a half inch at the sides but other than that I'm really pleased with the fit. I'm happy with the way it lays. I think it's going to end up looking really nice. So this one just needs a couple alterations and then it's good to go. So this is the Regency bodice, and I had to make a bunch of alterations to this. I forgot how large this dress form runs. I've been draping almost entirely on my wolf dress form recently, which is smaller. So I had to take both sides in by two inches, so four inches total. And then I ended up taking the back inward by an inch. And I do have Regency stays, but I'm fitting this over a bra instead. And I'm going to make some alterations to my patterns and then start moving forward. So this is what the Regency bodice is looking like. I've made a whole bunch of progress since I last talked to you guys, even though it hasn't been that long. I ended up getting it transferred to paper and then I got it cut out of the cotton fabric I bought for it. It is fully lined with muslin. The lining and the top layer were gathered down together, or actually no, they were gathered down separately, then sewn together, then top stitched together so it looks nice and smooth. And it has a kind of heavier look to it like the original dress had. The edges for the straps are turned inward, uh, but not sewn together because I'm going to be setting the sleeves the historical way. So it'll be seamed onto the lower half and then this will be top stitched on top. And yeah, the back panel for this is really tiny. I was looking at the extant example and I realized that these pieces should have lapped over the back panel instead of the other way around, but it is what it is, and so far I'm pretty pleased with this. So I'd like to get the skirt cut out and get the sleeves drafted tonight, and drafting a sleeve for this weird arm side is going to be quite the task, so I'm not excited about that. And then this is what the other thing I draped today is looking like. So it's coming along. Uh, I got the 
sack back portion done. I got the skirt cut out. Now I just have a whole bunch of stitching to do to secure the sack portion to the lining. And then I will have to gather the front skirts and get that sewn on and then get it actually lined. So this is like the base layer of the bodice. And then this is the actual lining for the base layer. So that will have to be sewn in because that finishes off the neckline and stuff. But that is the current state of things, so hopefully I can make a little bit of progress on both of these tonight. This is how the bodice I was working on yesterday looks this morning. I'm really pretty pleased with it. I haven't done a proper fitting with it yet, but I think it looks really nice and I really like the shape across the bottom edge. So this is my first draft of a sleeve pattern for it, and I've just cut it out and gotten it gathered down. I think I'm going to have to make a lot of alterations to this to fit the weirdly shaped arm thigh. The line for a modern arm opening would come down here so and sit relatively low so this is very very far back so that means that you need to have quite a bit of volume there to um, kind of accommodate and fill that area but you don't want too much volume because then it will poof out and you want to sit relatively smooth too so it's going to be kind of tricky it's definitely going to take some trial and error unless I get exceedingly lucky on this first attempt just because I'm not very good at drafting sleep patterns and I usually just make slight changes to them until I'm happy with them but this is a good starting place I think and hopefully in not too long I'll have a sleep pattern Pattern drafted for this and it won't be too painful and then I might be feeling confident enough to draft a sleep pattern for the other project I have in progress as well because it will need one too. That went shockingly well. The shape isn't quite what I'd hoped for but it fit really nice through the arm opening so I don't want to fiddle with it too much. The only change I'm making is sloping it down a little bit more dramatically towards the front. The gathering is also at a different spot now. It originally started here but that was too high up on the shoulder so it goes from here to here and this lines up with the strap on the back and it'll be gathered down to three inches. So I'm very pleased. Since this requires quite a bit of hand gathering, I'm probably going to work on these later on in the day when I want a little bit of a break, but I am going to get them cut out now and then I'm going to move on to that project and maybe even working on the sleeves for that project, but we'll have to wait and see. Also, I'm listening to Outlander. I'm still on the first book. I got like halfway through it and then I just forgot about it. So I'm back at it and I'm really enjoying having it on while I'm working. So that's been nice. So I just went ahead and got these straps sewn on to the 18th century piece and I also got all of uh, the front stitch to sew. Originally this was just pinned so I couldn't really do fittings with it but now I've sewn around all the edges so it just needs eyelets and then the overdress is done aside from sleeves and a hem actually. I definitely have to hem this. So now that it's all sewn together I can put it on and figure out the length that the hem needs to be and trim the bottom edge of the skirt down and then get it hemmed and then finally move on to sleeves, which I'm not looking forward to, but I also kind of want to get over with. I'm also going to have to make the petticoat slash underskirt for this. I think I'm going to play around with some not very historically accurate trims. I'm thinking this Battenberg lace would be really good. This is actually the lace that you use to make Battenberg lace, but it's in the right color scheme for this project. And then I have these two fabrics, which I'm going to play with, and I might actually like rough the fabric up and scratch it up with some scissors and add some patches to it, because this is a pirate themed project. So I want it to look kind of gritty and kind of well-worn uh, and that's why I'm really leaning into all of these tea stained kind of beigey colors uh, and everything like that. First I want to figure out the actual length of the overdress. And then I obviously have to get the sleeves cut out for the Regency project. I might do that next. I might also sew buttonholes into the unicorn thing or sew in the facing. That's all still down here. I just kind of feel like motivated today and I just want to wrap stuff up so it's a good feeling. So I made some major progress on the Regency dress last night. It is completely finished aside from closures down the front. I also managed to get all the buttons onto my unicorn dress and I finally finished sewing the facing into the butterfly dress. So now those are both completely done and ready to be added back into my wardrobe. I'm especially happy with how this project turned out. I love the fabric and I love the buttons. I just think it's adorable. But the first order of business for today is going to be making a hat to go with my Regency dress. So this is how it is spelled. It's spelled like capote, but my mom thinks it's pronounced capo or capote, and I'm not really sure, but I'm sure someone will correct me. This is a glossary of words that were used in the Regency period, but they don't actually have the pronunciation of the word, so it's not super helpful. But this is described as a transitional form between a cap and a bonnet. So it has a hard brim, but the top of it is soft like a cap. So I'm going to use this straw hat, which I've already cut the top off of and used for something else. I think it was used for a bonnet. And I'm going to use this to make up the brim, and then I'm going to use this fabric to make up the top. And I'm going to play around with some various different fake leaves, some fabric flowers, and this ribbon. I might try and do something with that too. So first step is going to be cutting down this brim, because right now it's too big. I think I may have cut the cap portion to be a little bit too large. What do you think? <laughs> 
So I've cut this down to size. It is shorter on one side than the other, but I think that's okay. This has kind of an upturned brim, uh, and then the brim is smaller around the back. So I'm fine with that. And this is what I cut out to be the cap. It was about 30 inches wide, and I think it was a little too wide based on the size. But I'm going to try pinning it in place, and I'll see what I think fit then. So this is what I'm currently working with. I ended up cutting the top portion down by like 10 inches. Seriously, I took so much off. Then I gathered the edges and stitched them by machine around the brim of the hat. You can kind of see the line of machine stitching there. And then I sewed in lining and I just traced around the brim of the hat to get the dimensions. And then I folded all of the edges inward and sewed it in place. And now this is ready for trims and then it will be done. So I'm going to get my hot glue gun out and then start gluing on the various little bits of flowers and leaves. Also, that is how it looks on in case you're wondering. And this is the dress and this is the dress I will be worn with. So it's not a perfect match, but I think the tones look really nice together. So the hat is now completely finished. I will show it in more detail in a moment. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I think it looks really nice with the rest of the dress. I like the color palette. I like the pale green tone with the uh, kind of more aqua green that matches the dress with the leaves. And I think the yellow is a nice touch as well. So now the dress ne just needs closures and then it is done. So I've switched over to working on this very quickly. I just want to get the sleep pattern for it done since I'm in a relatively peppy mood and that's something that I've been dreading. So I might as well get that task out of the way. I'm actually just using the sleep pattern for this pattern, which I have with McCall's. It is M7826. It is a 18th century Robala Turk inspired design. And the sleeves for it were actually quite loose, but they have a similar shape to what I want. So I've made a couple quick alterations. I'm gonna try cutting this out and seeing if that's more in line uh, with what I want for this. I just started filming for this yesterday because I was working on a pair of stays. So I got the pattern roughly transferred out of Nora Watts corsets and crinolines. And then I made a mock-up for it, and then I made some major alterations, and then I actually ended up getting that pattern cut out and mostly assembled. So I filmed a little bit of that process, though not as much as I wish I had. Through several hours of work last night, now the stays look like this. And the bottoms are completely bound. The tabs are completely bound. That is what they are called, not the bottoms. So today I'm going to try and get the eyelets done on this, and unfortunately I won't be able to bind the top edge just yet because I ran out of leather binding, so I've ordered more and it should be here in a couple days. And in the meantime, I have a commission project I really need to focus on. I have three blouses to make. I'd actually like to make one for personal use too, so four blouses and one skirt. But instead of working on that tonight, I'm going to work on a jacket because it is getting very warm here. And if you're wondering what that has to do with the project I want to work on, I want to work on finishing up a coat because it is getting out of coat weather and I want to get it photographed before the end of the year because by the end of this year I'm no longer going to be happy with it and I'm no longer going to want to look at it, much less get it photographed. I'd really like to get that photographed as soon as possible, which means I need to get it finished as soon as possible. So I'm going to pull it out and then we're going to do some work on that for the next couple of hours. I so wish I had filmed a before, but what I've been working on is the front panels for this jacket. So I got the edges turned inward and the edges were turned inward and then I sewed rayon binding down to cover up the raw edge at the front just in case that part flares out. Then I sewed all the buttonholes into one side and I sewed on all the buttons down the other. And these are buttons that I actually got for $10 for a card of $25 in New Hampshire. Yes, New Hampshire, not Pennsylvania. And I've used some of them on the skirt and then I've also used a whole bunch on the jacket and I have enough left that I can use them on the cuffs of this too. So after I got those panels completed, I sewed up the shoulder seam, I did a fitting, I took in the side seams pretty dramatically and then I sewed up the side seams and sewed on the collar. So now this jacket is looking a lot like a jacket, which is really exciting because this has been in progress for so long. I was originally having a lot of issues with doing the back panels and doing the seaming that incorporates a pleat. I just couldn't get it to look 
seamless. Like there was a clear bulge where the pleat started, but I managed to have it look pretty symmetrical, though it's not perfect, just for a lot of ripping out and then playing around and re-sewing. So I'm much happier with how the back is looking, and after the fitting, I'm pretty happy with how the front is looking too. So this is going to end up having a ridiculously large oversized mink collar. But before adding that, I have to figure out the sleeves. So that is definitely on my to-do list for tonight. And I actually have my inspiration for the mink collar in here, or over here rather. It's in this book, which I can link in the description box down below. And yeah, this doesn't look like a whole lot of anything right now, but when it's actually on, I'm very, very pleased with how it's turning out. So that's exciting, but I'm honestly in the mood to work on just something simple, either a book on tape or some music on and just chill and work on a simple 1950s dress. Specifically this pattern, which I'm making out of this really, really cute uh, fabric. So I think I'm gonna make some bobbins for this and then get started on that. I have the perfect length of fabric left to cut out the sleeves, which makes me very happy. I've just been working on a late 18th century project, which is what that skirt is for. And the bodice for it and the trim is over here. Uh, but I wanna get this project photographed on Saturday and it's currently Thursday. So I've decided to refocus on it. And I ended up using this sleeve pattern, which is one of my lovely patterns. Am I allowed to call it lovely? I think I'm allowed to call it lovely. Uh, so I used the pattern from this as a base and then I just slimmed it down quite a bit, um, added a little bit more shape to the elbow, more of a curvature, so it fits a little bit more slimly. And I also lengthened it. I was using one from the size 10 pattern and I added like two inches to it. So this is what it looks like now. It's a little bit different, but still fairly similar. I'm gonna get this cut out and get the lining cut out and get it seamed together. I haven't been doing top notch finishings on this project, I must admit. So I'm probably just gonna leave the seams inside raw, but add a relatively large hem on it. So I don't think any raw edges are gonna peek out or be super visible or anything. I'm not doing anything fancy with the sleeves or the cuffs, but I might be adding minks to the cuffs. So we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. Hello everyone. So I'm just hopping on here because I realized this vlog didn't really have an end. And unfortunately I don't have that fantastic of a way to end this. I kind of just want to apologize because I feel like this was a really crappy vlog. I go through months where I'm really eager to document my entire process and explain everything I'm doing. And then weeks where I really just want to turn on my music and sew as much as I can and not really talk to anyone. And that was kind of how this last month has been, and I think that shows in the lack of footage that I filmed. So I really apologize that this consisted more of me talking about what I'm going to be doing than actually doing things, but I hope you enjoyed it regardless. And one of the good things about forcing myself to post these every month is that it inspires me to be better in future months, because I don't want to edit boring footage in the future. So hopefully June will be a lot more entertaining, and hopefully May and April were good months for you. I know April at least was a good month for me. It was just very busy. And then May, I don't know what happened in May. I just wasn't really feeling May. However, I did manage to accomplish a lot, and that's why it's so frustrating that I didn't film a lot for this video. However, I did film lots of other videos throughout the duration of filming this one. I've been documenting the entire process of making medieval gown. The pirate-inspired dress I mentioned is going to have its own video. I also made a hat to go with it, and this is going to have its own video too. And then there were countless other vlogs and tutorials and making up videos that I filmed at the same time this as well. So the boringness of this video wasn't for lack of projects in progress and lack of doing stuff, it was just the lack of filming stuff and that one's on me. But thank you so much for watching anyway and before I go I just wanted to thank all of my wonderful patrons. All of my $10 and up patrons will have their names featured on screen right now and then I want to give a special shout out to my top tier patrons who are Jordan Carpenter, Heidi Neiser, Jennifer Pingleton, Tabitha Langston, Steffi S, Dot Cosplay, Mo Quintana, Rachel Bishop, and Sharon Cyrus. Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to all of you guys very soon, as well as around this time next month. And hopefully I will have a better video to show for it by the time we get there.